Live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon CloudNativeCon Europe 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and Ecosystem Partners. Welcome back to theCUBE here in Barcelona, Spain. It's KubeCon CloudNativeCon 2019. I'm Stu Min, and my co-host for two days wall-to-wall -wall coverage is Corey Quinn, and we're always thrilled when we get to speak to a user, and not just any user, but Fernando Alvarez, who is a cloud architect at X by Orange. Fernando, muchas gracias for joining us, sir. And, it's a pleasure. Uh, so, Orange, uh, you know, we are familiar, and many people are. X by Orange, though, maybe you can explain to our audience a little bit what you know this group is uh, in, inside of uh, you know a, a, a large global brand. Uh, X by Orange is a subsidiary from Orange, uh, Spain, and uh, from uh, Orange Telecom Group in in France. And what we try to do is to, to uh, reinvent uh, the way that uh, telco companies operate, uh, going more in a software way than the traditional way. So it's more or less what, what we're trying to, to do, and we started operations uh, in September last year, uh, just uh, with a different proposal to, to see if it could make it viable for this for, for, for the small and medium businesses in Spain. Yeah, so digital transformation, you know, many people talk about it, but you know, I've had some really good conversations with customers in the last year or so. You know, data is so important to businesses these days, you know, being data driven and being software at the core of what you do. So it's sometimes overstated that, you know, well, every company will be a software company sometime in the future, but you have done these transformations before, and that's what brought you into X by Orange. So tell us yeah. a little bit, you, you know, your role as a, cloud, as a cloud architect, you know, what's your mission, and you know, what, what, what's, what, what's your role in the org? Well, my mission is to make all the different pieces inside the whole IT stack to work together, especially in a cloud environment. So um, uh, from the designing, from the whole uh, ecosystem that uh, supports the, the, the platform and at the same time supports the whole company as a, as a telco operator or multiple telco operators, um, what uh, my, my role is to, to, to make sure that everything fits together, you know? And we're trying to, to accomplish it, and uh, we're very happy to, to, to have it in a, in, a, in a cloud environment, in public cloud, and using uh, Kubernetes as a, our container orchestri orchestration engine. Yeah, so can, can you lay out, you know, are you in one public cloud, many public clouds, data centers, and, you know, what, 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 what is your... Uh, what, what is we are span? now in, in one public cloud, in AWS, and, uh, but uh, having this uh, cloud orchestration layer allows us to, to move to, or to go multi-cloud or hybrid cloud uh, as soon as, as we want to do it. But uh, I think that we have to keep it simple from the beginning. Uh, having a tight schedule to start operation is, is key to, 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 to have the, our value proposal into the market. And to do so, uh, we have to do it in a simple way. So going first in one public cloud, going public cloud first, because it's, it's not a, a, a logical movement in a, in a big company, uh, even though we are on a spin out, but uh, normally uh, b big enterprises want to do in their own way in a, in a private uh, data center. So um, what we want is, is to be very fast and to do so, uh, the election is, is clearly uh, logical to go public cloud and to have an orchestration engine like Kubernetes to do uh, uh, or all, everything, no? Do you find that making decisions that enable portability in the future, if you want to move to alternate, pl alternate clouds or go hybrid, is in any way constraining what you're able to do or the speed you're able to innovate with? Yeah, but I think benefits are way better than the, the drawbacks uh, of that. Uh, normally, every single decision you have to make about uh, um, the architecture of uh, any piece, uh, one of the key uh, uh, aspects is to to see if it involves vendor locking uh, for for any of the components on the stack, for example, in the public cloud. Uh, but I think it worth the the effort because most uh, things uh, that you can uh, design as a as an engineer or as an architect uh, can be solved not only using. Um, um, a specific solution from the specific 
a cloud provider, but using a more generic way. In this, in, in this way, uh, then you can assure that you can move more or less easy, easy to, to other cloud or, or to other infrastructure. All right, so I, I, I guess it begs the question, uh, you know, you, you said it's AWS today and, and Kubernetes, it's, it's OpenShift, yes, that is yes. The, the Kubernetes platform. H how did you come about choosing that? And, you know, obviously, you know, Red Hat, you know, one of their strengths is yes. working in lots of different environments, so as you go to that hybrid and multi-cloud, that, was that the driver for them, or were you a Red Hat customer, or, you know, how did you that end up with OpenShift? Yeah, that was one, one of the drivers, and the other one was the, the support from, uh, for, for, the, for the platform. Um, uh, we were in a really tight schedule and we knew uh, Kubernetes uh, well enough, but we weren't sure is, uh, if the, um, uh, our knowledge were uh, enough to, to be in operations in, in only nine months. So for that, we um, um, uh, get uh, Red Hat on board to have all their knowledge in terms of support and the uh, professional services to help us to define how to do things uh, uh, with their platform and on OpenShift. And because OpenShift is a Kubernetes distribution, we were sure enough that uh, we uh, share the Kubernetes uh, way of doing things. So uh, that, for us, was a logical uh, election. What was it that drove your move to the public cloud in the first place? And I guess your entire digital transformation, by extension. Uh, did, did you say what, sorry? Yeah, yeah, what drove your entire uh, decision to first go to the public cloud? And secondly, to go, I guess, as part of your digital, larger digital transformation? Yeah, the main, the main reason probably was uh, the, the speed. Mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning, uh, the, uh, the whole company was, uh, was started thinking that uh, we were going to, to build our uh, a platform on, on a private cloud, but once we we made the numbers and see that uh, that that needed uh, one more year to start uh, operations with zero value to the customer. Uh, the decision was pretty easy. Let's go public cloud and let's think about this if it really adds value in the in the future. All right. So Fernando, if I heard you right, you said nine months from uh, you know when, yeah. when you went to deployment. Um, Big companies aren't necessarily known for their speed of change. <laughs> Talk a little yeah. bit about the, op the organizational dynamics, you know, how much you know, internal ramp up there was versus you know, relying on your, your, your partners and your vendors uh, to be able to help you meet those schedules. The good news is that we had the full Orange support to start a new company and we started as a separate company precisely because we wanted to be very fast. So instead of having all, all the processes from the big company uh, to do something that maybe uh, it could fail or maybe could affect the, the, the brand, uh, uh, we decided to, to start an, a, a, new, a new company from scratch with Orange in, this, in its name because uh, we have uh, the, the, all the, all the um, uh, well-known, um, well, all the brand is, is well known in, 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 the, in the world. So, uh, but at the same time, we wanted to, to, to start from, from scratch. Uh, that's why we started with uh, little people, uh, with uh, um, all of, most of them were coming from the software uh, industry instead of the telco industry. And we started to, to build from scratch the whole company. And that uh, we were 20 in February 2018. Uh, now we are more than 200, and we started operations in nine months from uh, uh, January 2018. So uh, uh, I think it was a really completely su success in terms of, of speed. If you were going to do it all again, starting over, what would you do differently? That's a really good question. Probably I will put more effort, even more effort, in, in transmitting the right culture. Because when you, um, uh, when you grow a lot, you have to be very carefully in transmitting the, the right culture to the newcomers because it's very easy to to um, let dissipate the, the, the culture that you create at the beginning with when you are only 10 or 20 people uh, and it's very difficult to maintain it when you are 200 and then if you are 200 with a with a wrong culture you are transforming yourself in a big company with a small revenue so that's uh, something that uh, needs to be taken into account
Okay. Yeah. So what's the, what's the roadmap from here? You know, does does, does the 12, 200 then help infuse into the rest of the company, or you know, how how do, how do things work going forward? Well, uh, what are we doing now is to um, we we build up a, um, a completely new st uh, IT stack um, that was from the beginning multi multi tenant to host multiple telco operators, and now we are hosting our second telco operator. That's uh, uh, Orange Spain. Uh, brands for small and medium enterprises that is now coming to our stack. So uh, this is uh, in our roadmap for this year. What we are doing is uh, integrating the old stack uh, from from Orange Spain to the to the new one, and at the same time trying to uh, complete our portfolio with new products. And these new products could be um, uh, managed and, and commercialized by X by Orange as a telco provider, and also by uh, Orange Spain as a, another telco provider. All right. When when people look at this show, they, there are so many projects going on and so many different pieces. Um, we, we sometimes hear there, there's a lot of choices and how, how do I make them? How, 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 how did X by Orange, how did you figure out what pieces of this stack is was was Red Hat mostly prescriptive as to how you do, or were you choosing the service mesh and all the other various pieces? And you know, what can you tell us about your stack? Well, what I can tell you is that um, we put a lot of effort on designing the stack by ourselves, not having any turnkey solutions, because we think that this, this is key for the success of the company. Because they, um, normally, uh, telco operators uh, put a lot of effort in their core network, but uh, don't put so much effort in the, in the technology, in the software technology. But now things are changing a lot, and we really think that uh, the software layer is as much as important as, uh, as, as uh, it was the, the network. And here is the real, the, the perceived value from the customer now resides in the, in the, in the software part. So uh, we designed each part individually, and we selected the right partners for uh, starting the development on the each part uh, um, and then make all together to work instead of going of, of a full stack provided by, by a unique company. Perfect. Have you, uh, as you've gone down this path, have you started to look down the serverless environment at all or are you uh, strictly in a, uh, I guess in a more container-based approach? Uh, let, me, let me broaden that a bit. Are you looking into functions as a service and other, I guess, serverless technologies or are you mostly uh, keeping it to, I guess, more um, commonplace uh, things that are, I guess, half a step back? Well, um, in, in telco industry, uh, what is traditionally the, the, the vendor, the traditional vendors for, for the telco industry are the network uh, vendors that are more in the in the in their way of uh, virtualization instead of the containerization and mm -hmm. not even to to mention the, the deploying uh, serverless. So, so we are putting a lot of effort on making them to uh, understand, and some of them are understanding it uh, really really well that it's key to have their, their products uh, be able to make an extreme automati automatization, automation. Sorry. So um, so uh, it's, it's a pity that we don't have uh, enough time and, um, to, to, to use uh, uh, technologies like serverless. We use them for little operations in, in our internal stack, but uh, we are not at the point of using it uh, in, uh, in products that we have because what we are doing is trying to, to, for example, to move the management part of the network services to the containers, and now our efforts are in that, pl yeah. in that place. Yeah. And to be very clear, that's absolutely the right answer. It, you have to meet your customers where they are with things that are uh, appropriate fits for the problems that they have. And advocating for a technology stack because, oh, uh, it seemed like the right answer when I pulled a bunch of people on Stack Overflow or something, is never the right answer to solve those problems unless how do I make people on Stack Overflow happy is the question. Spoiler, you can't. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's completely true. Yeah. So, Fernando, last question I had for you is, you know, here at a big show, you know, what what are you looking to get out of the show? What 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 excited you to bring you to the uh, the, the the event? And you know, any other things ar around your experience so far? What you're hoping to do that you could share? I, I think that um, the most important thing when we are talking about digital transformation for any size company is the people and the mentality of the people. So I I can 
I can never uh, um, um, say enough times that we really need to invest time with people to embrace the change, to embrace the kind of culture that is be behind uh, 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 the cloud native uh, mentality. Because if not, if we don't do so, what we are doing is just porting our old stack to a new technology without changing anything. So uh, put in that effort, uh, talk with people, make that this change happen together with people that is working already in, the co in, in big companies is key for the success of any story. All right, well, Fernando Alvarez, really appreciate you sharing your story. Congratulations on the progress so Thank far. Thank you very much. Best of luck in the future. Thank you. All right, for Corey Quinn, I'm Stu Miniman. We'll be back with lots more, and thank you for watching theCUBE.